In this video, I will show you the first part of building my own custom CNC router. Before I could start building, I obviously needed to know what I want to build and make a solid plan of it. That's why I decided to make a 3D model. Because I already knew how to make a 3D model in Cinema 4D, I used this, although it isn't really optimized for technical drawings. But on the flip side, Cinema 4D allows me to make some beautiful cinematics. After I had the model, I could start looking for parts online. As you might have already expected, I bought pretty much everything in China through AliExpress, because it's just the cheapest. Only the aluminium profile I bought from Redrick in Portugal and the stepper motors from Germany. I was pretty surprised that the stepper motors aren't cheaper in China. For the many aluminium plates I needed, I luckily was able to find some scrap ranging from 8 to 13 mm in thickness. Just right. After some trial and error with different cutting techniques, I found out that there is a metal blade for the table saw. That way I was very quickly and precise in cutting out the squares I needed. The cut quality was also pretty good, so I didn't need to do much of finishing. After that I wanted to start drilling holes and cutting threads. But then one of the coaches offered me to cut the pieces on his big CNC machine at home. Of course I gladly accepted that offer and so I started drawing. But as it turns out DXF files aren't always compatible. So my drawings weren't accepted by the CAM software. So we needed to make entirely new drawings. After we sorted all of these issues out, we met on a Friday afternoon to get the CNC milling done. We started at around 4 o'clock and had first some issues with the plates not being perfectly flat so they didn't stick to the vacuum table. Therefore we had to use the vise for these parts. When we finally had everything sorted out, it went pretty smoothly and soon it was midnight. <laughs> At this point I had finished all the brackets for the Y axis and some support brackets. So I could start building from there. Now I could get started with the actual building process. First I cut some aluminium profiles to length to build the ground table. They go under the NDF sheet so it gives some structural integrity and I am able to mount stuff to the sides of it. After that I took the 90 by 90 centimeters NDF sheets and drilled about 50 holes in them. 
to do so, I had to first mark the positions precisely because this is to connect the bottom frame with the MDF. And these holes all need to be aligned perfectly so it fits. So that it works, these holes also need to be straight. So I had to do it on the drill press, with, which isn't much fun with a 90 by 90 centimeters sheet of heavy MDF. After that, I made the holes a bit bigger on the top so that the heads of the screw go below the surface. Then, to clean everything up, I also countersunk the holes. With all of that done, I could connect the aluminum profile to the wasteboard. Therefore, I used M5 screws and T-nuts on the other end that go into the aluminum profile. But after a while, I had slid everything in place and it lined up perfectly. Then I could tighten all the screws down and the bottom frame is finished. Now Florian from Rubx Team Gaming also came to help me out for this project. With the ground table all done, I could attach the plates which hold the Y rails, where the Y axis glide on. These needed to be perfectly square to everything, so I also attached the Y rails and made sure that everything is straight and perpendicular to each other. For that, I measured the diagonals and I used a 90 degree angle to check every angle. After I did my best job of straightening everything, I screwed it down so that it is nice and snug. Following up, I assembled the X carriage. This is the point where the X axis connects to the Y axis. I also milled these pieces on the CNC machine and so now I only needed to connect the motors and the wheels to it. I already put them on the rails because it is much harder to do it later. I also connected the X rails by tapping the end of them and screwing them in place. Now the frame is pretty much done, at least it, it looks like that. Of course there's much mo more work to come, but that's how far I will go in this video. In the next video I will hopefully finish all the CNC milling and assemble the main things. But that's it for this video, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like down below and while you're down there, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and until next time.